In this video, we are going to talk about Satan and miracles. Yes, there is a Satan. Uh, yes, he is powerful. But can Satan also do miracles? Aren't there places in Scripture uh, that talk about others doing miracles, uh, others meaning other people than than God and the and the prophets doing miracles or false miracles? We're going to answer those questions for you right now. So if you remember back in Exodus, Moses is trying to get Pharaoh to let his people go, right? Moses shows up and uh, in order to start the conversation, Moses does a few miracles that he was told to do by God. And then Pharaoh's magicians seem to do the same things. He can, they convince Pharaoh that they can do it. Moses is nothing super great. Um, and these acts that, that Pharaoh's magicians are doing actually are said to be satanic miracles or, or miracles of Satan, things that Satan is, is causing to happen. Um, and there are places in the Bible that seem to say that, that he is able to, to do miraculous works, uh, that he has given these powers. But is that true? Second Thessalonians tells us the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders with all the wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and uh, so be saved. Right. And then in Matthew 24, you also see for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, by the way, would be in the Greek what we call miracles. They didn't have the word miracles. Um, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. So how exactly are we to understand this? If Satan can perform so much, if, if Satan can perform miracles, how do we know that the Bible is real? How do we know that Jesus is who he said he is? Because we know um, that being raised from the dead, right? We know that Christ is who he said he is because he raised from the dead. He he was resurrected um, and, and he confirmed these things with miracles. So Satan can do all these things. How do we know who's right? And Satan didn't, didn't do the resurrection. Let me state for the record... Um, that I do not believe that Satan can perform miracles. I do not believe that Satan has the same powers as God. That would make him God, right? If he could do all the same things that God could do, that would make him equal to God, co-equal, and he is not. Let me be very clear about that, and let me state the case right now. Um, here are some things that Satan isn't. Satan is not omnipotent. Uh, right, which is all powerful. Uh, omnipotence means all powerful, uh, and Satan is not that. Satan is not omnipresent. That is everywhere at all times, right? He, he's not that either. That is a characteristic of God. Satan is not omniscient, which is all knowing, knowing all things for all time. God has never learned anything. Um, and these are big fancy words that are characteristics of God. And Satan can't create from nothing. We know creation ex nihilo, creation out of nothing. What is nothing? What rocks think about, right? Uh, it's hard to think about nothing because even the molecules in the air, those are things. You just can't see them. Uh, God created all of that from nothing. And Satan doesn't have those powers. Those are characteristics of God and God alone. And it takes those qualities to perform true miracles. Stick with me here and let me kind of flesh out what this true miracles and false miracles looks like. I'm going to give you a great example that really helped me out at the end here in just a few minutes. So Satan is not all those things, all those characteristics of God, all powerful, all knowing, right? Everywhere, all at once. Um, he cannot create from nothing, but he isn't human. A lot of times humans, which is us, because this is all we can think about, the finite, which is us, can't think about anything other than humans. Our brains can't wrap around infinity and infinite things, right? Satan is not human, which means he's also not exactly bound by the limits that we are. He's not bound by movement and, and by realm like we are. Um, and there is a spirit realm and we are not exactly in it. 
Uh, so be sure that as you're thinking about uh, both angels and demons, uh, they are not bound to flesh like we are. They do not move around like we are. What does that look like? Let me explain it to you. I don't know because I'm not them and I'm not God and you don't know either uh, how exactly they move around and how all that works. That's for God to know and God to handle. Um, we move around like humans and we can't walk through walls and doors and we can't just show up and leave and we don't speak for God. Okay, and we don't speak for Satan, uh, depending on whether you're talking about an angel or a demon. So that are, those are a few things that Satan is not. But scripture tells us Satan is a created being. Satan was created. When exactly that happened uh, is kind of not controversial, but theologically discussed. It doesn't really matter. But he is a created being. God created Satan as an angelic being. Before he got tossed out of heaven, that's what he was. And his pride got him and one-third of the angels tossed out of heaven for all time to be thrown into the lake of fire um, at the end of time. He's the prince of the power of the air, right? He has been afforded certain abilities, certain power here on earth. And that power, don't forget, this is important, is granted him by the Father, um, which means he is allowed to interact with us in certain ways. He is allowed to tempt us and deceive us. And um, those abilities have been afforded him by God Almighty, his creator. We learn this from Job, um, amongst other places. <clears throat> and um, he is called the accuser, right? So he is called the tempter. He is called a liar. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the father of lies. He is called the deceiver. In John 8, it says, there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is his character. These are important things to know in order to answer the question, can Satan do mi miracles? There is no truth in him at all. When he lies, it isn't, that's his native language is lie. That's all he does is deceive and lie. So if we know a little bit more about Satan, what exactly is a miracle? This is controversial and it's not controversial or typically like we're going to ar argue and fight about it. The thing is, is there, there are different ways to understand words. And a lot of us humans, we look at childbirth and say, oh, what a miracle. And is it a miracle? Yes. But is it a true miracle of God as that word is intended in scripture, a biblical miracle? And the answer is no. Humans were created to be able to build other humans with their bodies. Um, so yes, they are cute little miracles. And in reality, God created that human. Okay. You see where I'm going with that? We say that there are miracles all the time. Oh, this person got well and they were healed and that's a miracle. Um, it's not the same thing as we're talking about here. A true biblical miracle where say Jesus walked on the water that defies what we know as humans. Or how about a floating axe head? If you throw an axe head in the water, it's going to sink, right? So it would be a miracle if it were, or resurrecting the dead. These are things that don't just naturally happen, but people do heal. And while that is an, an act of grace by God, it's not the type of miracle we're talking about. So make sure we understand that. I like R.C. Sproul's definition um, of miracle, and that's this. R.C. Sproul's definition is an extraordinary work performed by the immediate power of God in the external perceivable world, that's where we are, which is an act against nature that only God can do. So why do we say that only God can do? Because of what we talked about before, his abilities, all powerful, all knowing, he can create from nothing. And since he created all this that we see and that's around us, um, he's able to control it and manipulate it right? It's important we understand the purpose of those miracles. What is the purpose that we see of these miracles in scripture? Miracles don't just happen out of sheer luck. A hippopotamus isn't just going to randomly show up in your living room. You're not just going to get a thousand dollars dumped into your account, even though if that happened, you would think that it's a miracle. Miracles had very specific purpose, right? In Exodus, the Lord told Moses he would confirm his word Moses says, how are they going to know, right? Uh, that what I'm saying, the Lord says, I will confirm my words um, with these miracles. You'll throw your staff on the ground. It'll turn into a snake and they will see. That is something that defies, that is extraordinary in human. If you saw somebody throw a piece of wood on the ground and it turned into a snake, 
your your mind might be a little bit blown, right? Because that is unnatural. That's something only God can do. According to Hebrews 4, they are designed and used, this is important, to attest to the message, right? They're there to to attest to the gospel. That's what the message is, by the way, to attest to the message, to confirm the work of the gospel that's happening. So we have this miracles authenticate Christ's work and the work of God. A true biblical miracle. Again, let me remind you, if you didn't watch this part of the video, the miracle of childbirth, it is a miracle. That's not the type of miracle that we are um, discussing here. Um, but true biblical miracles glorify God. And they authenticate Christ's work and the work of God. That's what they're there for. That's what they were designed for. So if a miracle isn't doing that, it's not doing its job. Um, there are people and even religious groups that claim that miracles happen all the time. Uh, by definition, that's incorrect. By definition, a miracle doesn't happen all the time. It is something extraordinary. It is special. And it's, again, it's important to remember that miracles have a very specific purpose. And the purpose of a miracle is to authenticate the work of Christ, to confirm the gospel message and the word of God. Miracles accompanied what we call special revelation. Some of the prophets in the Old Testament were essentially able to do miracles, call down fire and have a, a rock burn up that's full of water, right? That's something that's out of the ordinary. Obviously, Christ could could perform miracles because he was God and he walked on water. He healed people. That was unnatural um, for him. It wasn't unnatural because it was his stuff. But that came from God. And then, um, excuse me. And then the some of the apostles and some of the disciples, while they were spreading the word of God and while they were preaching the gospel after Christ assumed into heaven, were given the ability to perform miracles. But these miracles always accompanied special revelation. They always accompanied the word of God. So, uh, and that has ceased. The canon of scripture is, is sealed. We have no reason to believe that God is offering new revelation because he's not. And he says that in his word. So he's no longer delivering people to pass on that information. He's no longer giving us prophets and apostles and disciples. If somebody tells you they're a true prophet or a true disciple and apostle, run from them because they're not. They do not have the word of God um, because the word of God is scripture and the word of God is infallible and inerrant. And they don't have that unless they're literally reading to you from the Bible. So the ability to do miracles was just that. So that, um, so that other than Jesus, who obviously could do them, who was God, the ability to perform miracles was given to a select group of people who were to be understood, were specifically communicating something that was directly coming from God. So do we see some of the, the puzzle pieces put together here? Do we take a look at the whole of scripture to answer the question, can Satan perform miracles? And if not, what are those things that he does? Okay. A miracle. Not done for the reason of confirming God's um, work, confirming God's word, the gospel. Uh, it really goes against God's intended purpose for those miracles, for true biblical miracles. So if Satan could do miracles, we would need to believe he is sent by God and that he is a teacher. He is in an instructor from God that we should be listening to. And we know that that's just not true. Uh, because that's he has spoken against all throughout Scripture. Um, so no, Satan can't perform true biblical miracles because of who he is and what he is limited by and because of who the Creator is. So that being said, so what can he do? Because obviously in Scripture there are places that um, show us, teach us, tell us um, that some some signs were some false miracles were performed so how are we to understand those things here here's my answer and this is the best illustration that i've ever had on the matter he can deceive satan is a master deceiver he is an unmatched liar that is his natural state that is his natural language to put this in perspective let me give you an example of what humans can do 
keeping in mind that Satan is not a human and he has abilities that we don't have. Have you ever been around a card magician? I love cards. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, occasionally it comes up. I collect decks of cards. It's strange. I've always been into sleight of hand and card magic, close up stuff, cards and coins. I cannot perform it, but I know a lot about it and I've studied it. I even know most of the time how these magicians are doing their tricks. Um, and I happen to live in the Los Angeles area, so I've been to the Magic Castle. It's a world-famous Magic Castle, right? I've been there quite a few times. And you stand in this card room, and you watch these magicians perform what appear to be mind-blowing tricks, okay? You can stare right at them. Like I just said, I know how they're doing them. I know what they're doing with the cards, and I can stare right at their hands and still be surprised and still be taken aback and not figure out they're that good. Okay. We've all been in a situation where we've watched something spectacular take place. We've watched a magician. Um, it's not so good on TV. Yes, it still is kind of mind blowing, but when you're watching it right in person, a magician performs some magic trick. Okay. And your mind is blown, but you knew it was a trick. Okay. The magician deceived you. He fooled you using your senses. He fooled us using our human abilities and our human senses and what our eyes and our ears and our brain are capable of doing and doing together. He used that knowledge to deceive us and to lie to us, essentially, to get us to believe something was happening that is not. Okay. But it's a trick. And he admits that. Uh, and we all know this, right? When we're watching a human magician do this. Imagine what the father of lies, the chief deceiver can do that is not bound to human flesh like we are. Imagine how much he can deceive you using your own thoughts and your own ideas and, um, and your own desires, how much he can turn your eye away from the truth and get you to believe something that's a lie because we've all believed things that are lies before that we watched happen right in front of our hands that was performed by a magician, right? We just knew it was a trick. Imagine if Satan is doing this in the spiritual realm, okay? That's how powerful he really is. So can he get you to believe that he's performing a true miracle? Sure. That's not a problem at all. Humans were kind of slow when it comes to sight and sound and hearing. So I hope that illustration helps you with what he's capable of doing. Um, and so to repeat, no, my friends, Satan cannot do miracles. T doing true biblical miracles um, is, is the power and ability of God the Creator and God the Creator alone. And he does not have the power of God. But he is powerful. And don't forget, as we close here, that his goal is just to get you to take your eye off of the truth. Satan's goal is to get you to miss the mark and, and to get you to follow him instead of following God. And he's going to do that by whatever means necessary. Satan doesn't generally come in a scary red suit with a pitchfork to scare you. Okay, This is an, an image that I think humans have designed over time for whatever purpose. As a matter of fact, it's on the thumbnail. Um, but But this guy doesn't believe that's how it works. Why? Because people run from scary things. Satan doesn't want you to run from him. He wants you to draw close to him and he wants you to follow him. So he comes as your best friend. He comes to deceive and lie. He comes to use the things that you like and that you're uh, enticed by. So you'll follow it. And if you're scared by it, you're not going to follow it very far. Right. And he comes when you're least expecting it. He comes to deceive and lie and to use your own desires and thoughts against you. So always be on your guard, my friends. Always be expecting it. Those are my thoughts on what scripture says about uh, whether or not Satan can use miracles. I hope that's helpful. If it is, give the video a thumbs up. Somebody else may need to see that. Um, and hey, if you're new here, thank you so much for checking us out. Claiming Christianity does Bible reviews and resource reviews, as well as Bible studies like this one. So if you're interested in content just like this, consider subscribing. Uh, so you'll be kept up to date with all the new videos coming out, which we have some great content coming out in the future. And if you're looking for some tips and tricks on how to study the Bible um, on your own, check out this video right here. And don't forget, be the Christians you claim to be.